Barn. It is Thursday, February 22nd. The time is 5.32 p.m. and I'm here at Bay Station. And this is in the Yorkville neighborhood. I'm just gonna head up to Cumberland Street. And that'll put us in the heart of Yorkville Village. And here we go. And that Starbucks is still undergoing some renovations, I see. But for this one, I think what I'll do is I'll head over and make my way towards Bay Street. And I'll be walking south down to St. Mary Street, and then it'll be east over to Young, and then I'll continue east. And I'll walk along Isabella Street to Sherburn. And then I'll probably finish up at Sherburn Station. I followed a similar route in reverse in a walk I recorded back in November of 2021. And the temperature today I think right now is around 7 degrees Celsius. And it got up to as high as 10 earlier. So that's the second pretty nice day in a row we've had. Pepperd and Kim in that location now. It's a vegetarian takeout spot. This here is Belair Street, so let's take this down to Bloor and then I'll head over to Bay. And you can hear those familiar steel drums just south of here. I say that just as they stop. There's whole run through for men right across the street from Harry Rosen to kind of upscale men's clothing shops. Not the kind of places I shop at. Explains the break in the action. Mm -hmm. 
Is it cheating if you have steel drums in your background track? As you're a steel drum street performer. There's the look up at One Bluer West. Starting to really rise by the end of the year. It'll either be the tallest or second tallest building in the city. You know it's unseasonably warm when you see people on their bike not wearing gloves at this time of year. It's a Lamborghini. So this is south down the west side of Bay Street. From the looks of things, I think the sunset will be in about half an hour from now. This is the west side of downtown. We'll be finishing up on the east side. There's a new Earl's location. Located in the Many Life Center. That was formerly the tallest residential building in the city. So this street coming up is Charles Street. And then the one after that is St. Mary Street. And it'll be a short walk over to Young. Things will be much quieter once I get east of Young Street. Got the light, might as well cross. This is St. Mary Street. That's about the midway point of it. It ends over at Queens Park. Off to the west. That's around Victoria College at the University of Toronto. But we'll be turning left here and going east over to Young. the street has a redevelopment notice on it. I wonder what the plans are for that. Oh, 
Well, it looks like this building might have a date with the wrecking ball. There's plans for a 59 story building. That'll be mixed use. That's just a development proposal. And you don't see too many apartment buildings like this in this part of the core. It's got towers in the park vibes. And kind of that distinct 60s style architecture. There's more apartments on that side of the street. I see a couple of plaques here. George Faludi Place, honoring a Hungarian Canadian poet who was with us from 1910 to 2006. If my math is correct, that puts him around 94. is a poem and you can see the moon straight ahead This building on the right is, or at least it was at one point, owned by the Church of Scientology. And it's been sitting vacant for well over a decade now, if I'm not mistaken. There are building permits on it, but I don't think any work has taken place inside. Kind of a shame, such a prominent location that's just sitting there unused. And here's Young Street. On the left here used to be a popular barber shop called the House of Lords. Now it's a Korean Jokbal night market restaurant. And this is Isabella Street. So it spans between here and Sherburne for a little under a kilometer. Oh my, look at the size of this tower proposed. 76 stories. 249 meters. And look at the rooftop element. There's a Korean tukboki and kimbap restaurant. And hopefully the Artful Dodger is not impacted by that development proposal. This has been here since 1910. Not the pub, but the building. It's a old Second Empire style pub. And their food is quite reasonably priced. You get a fish and chips for $17.95. They advertise themselves as having 
to bars, to patios, to fireplaces, to jukeboxes, to pool tables, and to dartboards. Always had great friendly service there. And there is Iwa, a popular Korean bar. I think that's been there since about 2008 or 2009. And I never noticed this Topanko video and fun bar on top. That home there dates back to 1875. Interesting mix of buildings. There's a 60s era apartment. On the left we have the Children's Aid Society. I think they work to protect children from neglect and abuse help foster a more nurturing community for children and at-risk youth. And I think we have the oldest building on this stretch. This dates back to 1860. the Jared Sessions house. I don't see a plaque in front of it, but that houses the world's largest LGBTQ2 plus archive. There's some towers looming in the background. Right next to another old home. And this old apartment building dates back to 1931, the Brownlee Apartments. They have a studio, one bedroom, and monthly parking. A lot of the people in these rentals are no doubt trapped in a similar situation to me and many others in the city where thanks to rent control it's not really affordable to leave where you are and find a comparable place. I like the look of this building. The detail on those balconies is pretty neat. And of course the landlords would love to get those longer staying tenants out. And a lot of them resort to what's referred to as lipstick renovations. That's where they update common areas and slap new paint and do really unnecessary renovations. And then they apply for an above board rent increase because they've done the math. That'll make them more money in the long run than not doing those. It's one way to stick it to the longer time tenants. And here we are at Church Street. And this is the north end of the Church Wellesley Village, the heart of the city's LGBTQ community. And this is about the halfway mark along Isabel Street.
Well, probably not. Maybe somewhere between here and Jarvis would be. I'm gonna go back to the north side. more 60s era apartments mixed in with much older apartments. And it looks like they're planning to shove a 62 story tower on the same lot as this one. That's a common thing you're seeing. Some of these older apartment buildings have been bought up by real estate investment firms. And they're redeveloping the bare parts of the lots. Or at least they're trying to. planning on incorporating a 69 story tower where this building is that most likely has heritage status that's the official IELTS test center that's an English language test And this is Jarvis Street coming up. Looks like I'm gonna just barely miss the light again. There's the home of the Evil Empire. It's the headquarters of Rogers, Canada. Just across the street there is the Casey House. That's a specialty hospital for those living with HIV. And I think they moved into that location around 2017. Before that, this building here was an abandoned mansion. I think it was blue. Looks like they restored its original color. And they built a massive addition to the building. Those apartment buildings looming in the distance are part of St. Jamestown. It's a rather prestigious architectural firm that looks like or behind the design of this building.
And this is Huntley Street. Building says ETFO. I think they represent occasional and substitute teachers for the Toronto District School Board. Dougie is BBQ. Looks like there's plans to wedge a 69 story tower on this lot. This is allow. Oh, including 80 replacement units. So what that means is they want to knock this building down and offer everyone in it compensation to rent another pro property. And then when the building, the new building is up, the people on this one will be offered spots in the new building. That's one of the obstacles when developers want to buy out an older building. And I think they get to keep their rent protection. So it's good that there's some protections in place. made it to Sherburn Street. Well, almost. There's the Isabella Hotel and Suites with a Gabby's Bar at the base. And this is where Isabel Street comes to an end. The sky is taking on kind of a neat glow right now. That, at least at one point in time, is the worst rated Tim Hortons in the city. Apparently the service there was abysmal. Never went there myself. It was a mural I've never really taken a close look at. And a look into St. James Town. I've done a few walks through that neighborhood. Here's a new condo about to go up. I'm willing to bet the developers didn't advertise this as being in St. Jamestown. That 
home there was part of the most expensive residential relocation in Canada. They had to move the house, I think, about 14 feet to allow for the tower behind it to be constructed. So that one or this one holding the Maison Selby. It's a French O&B restaurant. To Bloor Street, and I'll hop over to Glen Road. being drawn in by that pink sky straight ahead. the best look of it I'm gonna get. But this is Bloor Street East. And I'll look to the west and off in the distance is Yorkville where I started this one. Someone somewhere has a pretty spectacular view of the sunset. And this construction here is due to the replacement of the Glen Road pedestrian bridge. We used to be able to walk across into the Rosedale neighborhood right over the valley. I think that will be completed this year. There's the north end of Glen Road. Oh wow, look at the color of the sky. Sometimes you just have to be in the right place at the right time. My phone is refusing to recognize my face. There we 
go. We are at Sherburn Station, so I hope you enjoyed this one. Starting at Bay Station, heading south through the Yorkville neighborhood, down Bay Street to St. Mary Street, and then it was east to Young Street, and then down to Isabella Street, and then east all the way over to Sherburn Street, and then up to Bloor, and over to the Glen Road entrance of Sherburn Station. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you wish to support the channel, there's links to my Patreon and YouTube channel membership down in the description. I have an Instagram account, which I have not updated forever as well. And there is a super thanks button appearing below the video if you wish to say thanks that way. Anyhow, I'm going to put my camera gear away. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Yoink.